of an economic hitman, it was really a struggle to try and see the guy that I knew as a shaman and a shapeshifter was also <laughs> the guy who had written the diary of an economic hitman. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, uh, good question. I can't remember how I came by that book. I mean, I get a lot of actually a lot of fans who come to gigs give me give me random books um, about things that I've read. Uh, uh, so that may have been one that I was given to me maybe at a concert in New York. I think about four or five years ago. I think, um, but it was a yeah very interesting book. Um, yeah, it talks about how the World Bank and the IMF have basically defrauded a lot of the natural resources from the third world. You know, and I think that's uh, again that's something that's been going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how. how how corporations treat property rights in uh, in third world countries is 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 a, is a major sort of uh, injustice in the world, you know. And I think um, again, these are kind of things that I think people are sort of just gradually sort of uh, waking up to and um, sort of wanting to change, you know. Did you want? I thought I had seen an interview where you had said that you wanted uprising to kind of be a. Uh, it's informed and and you're making a statement with it, but you also wanted it to be fun and kind of a a chant so football hooligans would <laughs> sing along with it. Yeah, well, that song was kind of inspired by these. I was in London at the time of these G20 protests when the, all the mm -hmm. political leaders were meeting together. Mm -hmm. And I, what what made me laugh is that people were protesting, but they were also like dressing up in these crazy costumes, like people like dressed as chickens and dressed as kind of uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse and all this kind of <laughs> crazy costume. And pe people basically just partying in the streets. And I kind of like that, you know, because you, you see some of these protests that are going on in Greece and it, and it, can, it can get a bit violent, but you, but I like I liked the idea of there being mass kind of protests, but it actually everyone having fun, <laughs> you know. Uh, like, so, you know, the, in other words, peaceful protest, I think, is kind of like the way forward, you know, the idea of everybody going out in the streets and just uh, actually having a big party, you know, <laughs> as, as opposed to uh, letting it get into a kind of violent position, you know. So I think I, I quite like the idea of... Uh, of, uh, of creating an uprising, but a fun, a fun one at the same time. You know? I saw a, a quote that you had said something to the effect of that the resistance was a culmination of everything that you've learned about music so far, but then I think in the same, it might have been in Q Magazine where I saw something about on one of the songs you actually used either a llama's toenail or a collection <laughs> of toenails to create some sound effect on this record. Yeah, the collection of llamas' toenails. Yeah, it's actually a great percussion instrument. Uh, Dom's got quite a few of, of strange um, dead animal, <laughs> dead animal parts that he uses for percussion, like bones <laughs> and stuff. Uh, I mean, we've got actually we've got the idea from Tom Waits, and we're big, big fans of Tom Waits. Me and Dom went to see him play in the Beacon Theatre about must have been about eight years ago in, in New York, and um, and he's a uh, He's, he's very much into his experimental p percussion, and we read a little bit about some of the stuff that he uses on his albums. And he's used, uh, you know, animal bones and like, you know, like big sort of bins and old bits of used disused pipe and stuff like that. So, in the studio, whenever we do percussion overdubs, we like to use strange items, you know. And this this time, we managed to discover llamas' toenails, <laughs> which, uh, which, uh, which which are great. It's, it's, about, it's like a it's like a big ball of llamas' toenails, and when you shake them up and down, it, it sounds like a crowd of people clapping, or it, or it sounds like camels kind of marching whilst people are clapping. It's a very weird sound. But What's the name of the instrument? Do you just go to a music store and say, give me that thing that's full of llamas' toenails? Oh, it's, it's called llamas' toenails. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, uh, you, can do, you, know, you can do your grade 8 uh, you know, lessons in llamas' toenail playing if you want. It sounds like, uh, yeah, so it sounds like these sort of camels marching. And, uh, and so we used it for the song uh, United States of Eurasia, which is kind of uh, influenced by a little bit of... Um, Middle Eastern music, you know. No, no, I'm so glad that you brought that up because I, uh, the book, The Grand Chessboard, also factored into that song, yes? Oh, absolutely, yeah, that, that song was completely uh, influenced, uh, that, uh, that, sorry, that book influenced that song, yeah. Um, yeah, just sort of singing about this sort of fictional, and also because I was reading 1984 a little bit, so the Eurasia thing came up, you know, and then obviously, um, so you've got the fiction from the book 1984, but also there's books like The Grand Chessboard, which talk about this kind of, this idea of there being a Eurasia at some point, which is quite a, quite a scary thought because it would be a, it would end up being a massive sort of superpower, you know. And um, so, you know, if, if China and Russia and, and uh, Europe ever unify, um, you guys should be scared <laughs> in, in the States. <laughs> but, but it was, uh, so I thought I'd write a song about that idea. You're hilarious because I, in the interview where I was reading about that, I, there was something about, I guess it was throughout the song that you guys were rolling on the floor laughing. Was that because of the llama's toenail sound effect? Uh, well, we like to push things a little bit sometimes further than what my some bands would, you know, like with all the o vocal overdubs and the, and the silly sound effects and stuff. And then so, some of the songs have got such a, a theatrical element that every now and again, you you know, you're sort of caught in this, you know, taking it all very seriously and listening to something like United States Eurasia. And then and that bit comes in at the end where it sounds like a bit like a Queen song or something where we all start screaming Eurasia at the end. And, you, and every time I hear it, I can't help but 
a smile comes to my face, and it, make, it makes me think of uh, like it could be the soundtrack to Flash Gordon or something, you know. So um, I think I think we've never really held back on on certain things in the studio, and, and then obviously that can uh, lead to a, us having a bit of a laugh in the studio as well. Well, speaking of having laughs, I read um, something about the creation of the the Guitar Hero avatar. What was that like for you to be Matt Bellamy from Muse, and someone hands you spandex and ping pong balls to create your own <laughs> avatar? What was that like? Uh, that, was, that was pretty weird. I had to go in this room full of all these like thousands of little cameras or something, and uh, and there was like a crew of people there, and uh, and they basically put me in a leotard. You know, like do you call it a leotard here? Like a sort of tight, <laughs> extremely tight lycra <laughs> kind of suit, which is uh, obviously uh, brings out every detail you can imagine. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and then they proceed to cover you in ping pong balls as well. So you you, you pretty much look like a total. Uh, total geeky. I mean, you couldn't look more uncool. And then they tell you to actually look really cool and rock out on the guitar. So you're sort of trying to, you're sort of trying to rock out and be cool on the guitar, but at the same time you look like an absolute buffoon. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a funny one. Yeah. Are you familiar with Renee Flemley, Fleming, the opera star? Uh, I've never, I've met her daughter actually. I've, ne I've never met her. Um, but yeah, I've heard she's done a cover song. Of one yeah, of she's doing um, endlessly, and I just wondered if you'd heard it yet, and and you know what your thoughts on it were. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it briefly. Um, when it was done, about I think it must have been a couple of weeks ago or something, and uh, yeah, it sounded really good. I think it's better than our version. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm really happy about that because it's because uh, it's one of those songs that was least sort of one of the least known songs, I suppose, on on the Absolution album. And uh, so yeah, it's nice to hear someone uh, doing it. Doing yeah, I heard she that. was doing like Peter Gabriel, some Mars Volta, and then it Muse, but then it kind of put a stick in the spokes because I heard she was also doing Jefferson Airplane, and it's like okay, well. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty eclectic uh, set of covers, I think. But yeah, I'm glad we're on there. Now, what what is the story going on with Twilight? Last question, please. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Last question, oh, please. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> you guys, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had a time limit. Um, oh, what you guys are going to be in Fort Worth on Wednesday, and I wondered if you would talk. Is it true that you um, that the first song that you ever learned to play was the theme song for the TV show Dallas? That's correct, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was about, I must have been f four years old, three or four years old, and my brother uh, used to watch Dallas all the time, my older brother, and, uh, and he, used to, um, he, used to, he used to love the theme tune, so he took me to, he used to make me listen to it, and then he, he used to carry me into the piano and try and make me say, he used to play that, play that, all that, you know, and that, that was the first thing I ever played on the piano. <laughs> wow, awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, and we will see you guys when you hit town, when you hit Fort cool. Worth on Wednesday. Okay, hope to see you there.